Are you looking to add a logo, your name, or maybe a session title as a video overlay for your next virtual call or presentation? Well, maybe you feel like OBS or Ecamm is just more than you need or feel ready for, and that's okay. In that case, I think it's worth checking out Camo. I've been playing around with the Camo Studio and I do think this is a great option for someone who is looking to get into the virtual camera but just wants to start simple with some basic overlays. So today I'm gonna walk you through the studio. How does it work? How do you set it up? We will create a couple of overlays and then connect it to Zoom. Now, normally Camo is promoted as a way to use your mobile device as your webcam, which is a great feature, honestly. But because on this channel, I focus on virtual presenting, I'm gonna focus more on the virtual camera. Now a note before I begin is that I am using the pro plan. And if we take a look at the pricing, there is a free plan that is available, but more of the features are available on the pro, which as of recording right now is around $50 a year. But there is an option right below here for a lifetime license, which right now is $99. So a one-time payment to get these features could definitely be a good option if you think that this will suit your needs. So let's dive into the studio. Right now you can see I do have my Sony camera is connected to the studio. And let's take a look here at the top left for camera settings. I can choose between different devices like my built-in camera, continuity camera, and up here at the top, I do have camo on my phone. So if we briefly switch over here, I've got my phone on a tripod beside my Sony so that I can show you an example. I can bring this in and now the settings have changed a little bit. So if I look here, I can see, first of all, my battery life, which is very important if you're using your phone. I can change the, the, the lens width and I can change between manual focus and automatic focus and I can adjust the focus level. There are also some options for my resolution, what do I want to come in, as well as your frame rate. So I'm gonna go back to my Sony and we're gonna focus on this version because this is the camera that I would use for my meetings. So we've got our camera selected. We're gonna to come to audio later. Let's take a look at framing. Now I think framing is for the pro plan, but I like the ability if you have a really wide camera and you don't wanna show a lot of your room or you want to pull in a little bit, you can use this zoom. So I can zoom in a bit more and then you can drag this box down until you get positioned the way you like. And remember, I like to minimize the amount of space between the top of your head and the top of your video frame. So now we got the framing done. So I'm going to close that. Let's take a look at overlays and watermarks. So this is probably what you're interested in if you want to use a virtual camera. And right now there is the camo watermark on here. And you might think, oh, this is probably because I'm not on the paid plan. Well, in actual fact, you can click on this number one, which is the watermark. If I click on that, it hides it. Now, if I click on it again, it will come back. Or if I use, in this case, command one, I can also use this. This is a little hide the overlay button. So I can do that to make it disappear. And I can also on a Mac, it is command zero. I'm not quite sure on Windows. So I have to check with that. But here you will see there are some overlays already. So I can look through this library and say, okay, is there one of these overlays that I want to use and then update? If you want to use one of these, let's say I like this one and I want to make it my own. I'm going to right click, say duplicate and edit. So I need to create a fresh one and then edit it. So if I do that, gotta give it a name. So I'll call this lower left bubble. I don't, I'm not, it's not quite a bubble. And now I've got it and you can see all of these elements and I can update these. So if I click on text, this one is the name. So now I can double click this Oh no, over here, it's over on the side. So I could say cat and I can just update this to everything that I want. I can also click on it here. It makes it a little bit easier. So I can just say trainer, speaker, and you can easily go through this way. So you can update something that already exists, which makes it nice. And if I click on the, the shape, so this is the rectangle here, then I can play around with the color. So maybe if I want something, maybe a little bit more purple, I can also add my face. And so with this example here, with this is an image. So let's just click through. So it's the first one. 
So I can actually import, use this plus element and bring in my picture. And if I want to get rid of this, I can right click on it and say delete. So maybe I don't want to have a picture and I can just move over my name like that. So you don't have to use a specifically and I'm going to make that longer. So I have just updated one of the existing overlays and I'm ready to go. And when I go back using this little arrow here to go back to the studio, I can either use this shortcut to turn it on. So I can say command seven in the middle of a meeting if I want to show it. Oh no, that's not, that's not the one we made. Where's the one we made? Let's find, oh, it's up number one. So I would actually use the shortcut command one in my case. You can take a look at your computer if you're not using a Mac. And then I can hide it by clicking on this or doing command zero. So you have some control while you are in the meeting. So that's an example of a preset one. So let's now create our own. I'm going to click on create new and let's give it a name. So I'm going to just call this name lower third. And so I've got this fresh page with no elements and I can click on plus to add an element, text, image, rectangle, circle. So let's just start by drawing one. And if you want, we can have this, maybe have a name lower third in the corner. And I am going to choose sort of a fill color over here. There we go. And now I'm going to add text. And in this case, let's drag this down on top of the box. I can change this to maybe be left aligned. I can update the text here. And I can change the font and adjust that regular, bold, etc. And the size, I can make the size a little bit bigger. That got cut off, so we can do this. So you have these options here. And the box, if you're on a shape, what's nice is they have these positions at the top right. So if I wanna make sure that this is against the left side, I can press that button here. And if I want to adjust the preview magnification, Maybe I want it to be a little bit smaller so I can see the edges. I can zoom out there. So now I've just created a really simple shape and I can edit this pretty easily. And you can add other elements if you want to add your title, other things on the screen. This could also be a title as well. So let's go back. I've just created this other one. So now it has jumped to the top spot and I could have more than one. So maybe this was a session title and then this is my name and information. I can easily do that. Let's create a new one and actually bring in an overlay, which is an option. If you have a static overlay, so a picture, you can bring that in. So we're gonna create a new one. And for this, let's call it, let's just call it border. I'm going to show you a simple example of bringing in a border. So let's make this a little bit smaller. And I have some graphics here that you cannot see, but they are in a little graphic window. You could either add plus, and then say image and find it, but you can also drag and drop. So I'm going to drag this overlay and I've got it here and I drop and it's kind of small. So we're gonna resize it, bring this up and we're resizing it until it hits the edges and it looks like it's covering all the edges. So I could do something like this, maybe pop my logo in the corner and then I bring this into my meeting for a little pop. It's a very simple overlay. So we're going to just leave that one as it is. So you can see how it's very easy to drag things in. Now I noticed that when I'm on an overlay, so this would be the border. On this example, right now it looks like if I were to edit this, if we right click and edit, and I click on the rectangle, there's no option at the moment for something like a gradient. So if you did want a gradient or kind of that nice effect with more than one color, this is where I would consider adding your own images. And I've got lots of videos on how to create your own, whether that's in Canva, PowerPoint, Keynote. We're going to create one more overlay and this one we will say uh, gradient lower third. And let's just, I'm gonna drag and drop a lower third. This one matches the border. And let's zoom out a little bit here so I can see the edges. And actually let's use this tool. We'll position it against the side and we can position it against the bottom. And then I'm going to drag this bigger up to the top corner. And it looks like it's covering the full thing. Then I can add some text. So maybe I want to add the title 
and make this a little bit wider and just say over here, I'm used to double clicking the text, session title, it's really fancy, and then increase the size a bit. So you can really create simple, quick overlays. And then once we go back, if you are running a session, now in this case, let's hide all the overlays. If I was running a session and I wanted to first introduce myself, I might show this overlay. So press on the one, my session title will pop up. And then maybe I just wanna to switch to a border and just run the rest of my session and not worry about anything else. Or just hide the overlay once you are done with it. If it's something like a logo, you can just show that logo the whole time. So let's look at one other thing that we haven't yet before we connect to the call. So image enhancements, this does allow you some options. I do believe that this is pro plan, but I'm pretty impressed with the options for portrait and then privacy. So let's click on for background. For privacy, when it's really low, you've got this slider here and you drag it over, it can get more blurry or less blurry. It's actually a really nice blur. If you like that bokeh effect where you're in focus and the background's a bit blurred, this actually I think does a good job. It's not too distracting with when you move your, your arms or hands around. I think it does a good job with it. And you can just turn this up or turn this down. Privacy on the other hand is going to block and you can make this, you can drag this to how much privacy you want. It's always gonna block everything in your background though. And then finally we have, if you have a green screen or if you want to choose a background, you can upload your own. What's nice about this, these features, is that a virtual camera usually doesn't play well with, or a virtual camera, if you have an overlay, does not mesh well with some of the built-in background options in something like Zoom or Teams. They'll put in a background, but if you have an overlay, it's gonna hide part of the overlay because it's not a human. So this is a really nice feature if you want some privacy and you want an overlay. So I think it's a really nice mesh because they've done a good job with the background options here. And it's not, not nearly as distracting with what I've played with so far. So I think that's really helpful. There are also some options like adding some different filters over your camera and you can slide this to the effect that you want to have. Uh, if you want to add a filter, which you absolutely can, and I won't go through all of those. When it comes to image adjustments, this is where you can get a little more granular. So maybe if you have a lot of light coming in and you're really washed out, you can play around with these and maybe the coloring in your room is not ideal. So you can use these to adjust your camera. Now I said I was going to talk about audio settings. What's really thoughtful <laughs> about Camo is that you can connect your microphone. Now you might ask, why do I need to do that? First of all, you can actually do some recording here in Camo. So if I just wanted to set up maybe my logo and record a message, I can do that in the top corner here. So I can choose where do I want to save the file if I record something. And then if I click this little button, it will start recording. And then I can pause my recording. And what's nice about this is not only do you have the recording, but the audio option is great for when you're connecting with the virtual camera, you can also connect with a virtual mic. Because typically if you are connecting, let's say to a Zoom meeting, and you're using a virtual camera, you've got your camera, then it goes through the software, and then it goes to Zoom that can cause a slight delay. And if your microphone's going directly to Zoom, your audio might arrive before your video. Now in this case, both your mic and your camera are going through camo and then to the Zoom. So you are reducing the risk of having an audio delay or, or a video delay slash being out of sync. So I think this is a really good option. So you can choose which microphone you're using and then you'll pick that in Zoom. So let's actually go over to Zoom. We're gonna open a Zoom meeting here and I don't have my camera on in this case yet, but in the Zoom meeting, if I click on my camera options and I select my camera, I can choose camo camera. So now if I start my video, this is the video. You can tell the background's a little more blurry. So I've got my camo camera. Now the microphones have a lot of <laughs> audio options. Yep, so you can see here that I've got camo microphone. So I can choose camo microphone. So I've got the camo mic and the camo video. Both of these are feeding into your meeting. And then that way you can reduce the risk of your voice and your video 
being out of sync. So it's pretty easy to set up. Let's in the studio make one of these watermarks. I'm going to click on, let's say the border. Now I've just made the border appear in the Zoom meeting. And if I wanted to switch and maybe show the session title, I can do that. And then I, I double clicked on it. <laughs> now I've got this session title. And now let's go over to the border. And we can also take a look at this one that I slightly modified. So I'm in the Zoom meeting, all of these are visible. I've got a little bit of the blur effect on my background. So that is Camo. I think it's a really great option for entry level virtual camera. Just add a simple overlay. Don't have to worry about scenes. And you have that great option of both the audio and the video to reduce the risk of the sync. Plus you have the option to use your phone or your tablet as a webcam, which is also a really great feature. But no matter what, I think it will help you to run more professional, engaging, and seamless virtual presentations.